Democrat of Houston, Texas. It was 144 years ago that members of the Democratic Party first met in convention to select a presidential candidate. Since that time, Democrats have continued to convene once every four years and draft a party platform and nominate a presidential candidate. And our meeting this week is a continuation of that tradition. But there is something different about tonight. There is something special about tonight. What is different? What is special? I, Barbara Jordan, am a keynote speaker. Jordan lived an incredible life. She rose from discrimination to serving in the United States Congress, where she broke down barriers and opened the way for young men and women of all backgrounds to pursue their dreams. She did so by reaching for her own dreams and in the process became one of the most powerful voices of the 20th century in American politics. Jordan was born on February 21st, 1936, in the historic Fifth Ward community in Houston, Texas. Her father was a Baptist minister and warehouse clerk, and her mother was a housewife, teacher, and maid. Jordan grew up surrounded by family. She also grew up surrounded by a system of Jim Crow segregation in Texas. Because of Jim Crow, there were laws that said African Americans, like Jordan, could not go to the same schools as white children or go to the same places, like lunch counters or hotels or even certain seats on the bus that were reserved for white people. These laws also prevented African Americans from voting and having a voice in the American political system. But Jordan did not let that stop her from getting an education. It was at her high school at Phyllis Wheatley where she was first inspired to become a lawyer. During a career day assembly, she saw a presentation by a female attorney named Edith Sampson. And Jordan realized that becoming a lawyer would allow her to make a real difference in the world. After graduating from Phyllis Wheatley High School, she went on to study at Texas Southern University, where she studied history and political science and prepared herself for law school. Perhaps most important, Jordan joined the debate team at TSU. Her debate coach turned out to be Dr. Thomas Freeman, a legendary professor who served at Texas Southern University for 70 years. Freeman worked hard with Jordan, challenging her to develop her remarkable talents and become an award-winning debater and public speaker. During her time at Texas Southern, with Jordan in the lead, the TSU debate team proved that it could take on the very best schools in the country. At one competition, they tied with Harvard University for first place. Jordan worked hard in school, graduating from TSU with honors and was accepted into Boston University's prestigious law school. In law school, she studied hard and learned even more about the legal challenges facing women and the importance of protecting civil liberties and rights of people. After graduating with her law degree in 1959, she taught college at Tuskegee University for one year. And then she moved back to Houston in 1960 where she established a private law practice where she specialized in helping women with legal troubles. But that work also meant that she saw injustices that she had grown up with. She realized firsthand that the system 
of Jim Crow and discrimination against women were widespread and supported by unjust laws. So Jordan became convinced that she could help even more people if she could help write and pass more just laws. The only way that she could do this, she realized, was to get elected as a legislator. That, however, was going to be a major challenge. Because of Jim Crow, most African Americans were not even allowed to vote. And there had not been an African American elected to state office in Texas since the late 1800s. In fact, Jordan's own maternal great grandfather, a man named Edward Patton, had been one of the very last black men elected to the Texas legislature all the way back in 1892. Did Jordan let that stop her? No, she did not. Just like with her education, she pushed forward and decided to run for public office. But it was really a tough fight and she did not win the first time. In fact, the first two times she lost. Yet she refused to give up. And she recognized that with each loss, she also made important gains. With each election, for example, more voters learned her name. And with each speech that she gave and every community event that she attended, she established more relationships with voters, many of whom came to recognize that she would make an excellent legislator. On March 4th, 1960, TSU students held Houston's first civil rights sit-in at the grocery store lunch counter that normally would not serve black people. Their goal was to stay there until they were served. And brave acts like this help to break down barriers to equality. One of the greatest achievements came, however, with the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which would have a powerful impact on Jordan's life and career. The Voting Rights Act said that no state, including Texas, could prevent people from voting based on their race, which allowed hundreds of thousands of African Americans to register to vote in Texas for the first time. And it also meant that many election districts would have to be redrawn so that they would finally give fair representation to black communities in the state. That was when all of Jordan's hard work paid off. During the 1966 election of the following year, when African American voters in Houston had the chance to elect someone for Senate District 18 in the Texas State Legislature, they chose her. And that election made history because Jordan became the first African-American to serve in the Texas State Senate since 1883 and the first black woman ever to serve. She went on to great success in the state legislature where she helped ensure the Texas passed a constitutional amendment that guaranteed equal rights for women. Then in 1972, she made history again when she became the first African-American from the South to be elected to the United States Congress, where she served as a member of the House of Representatives until 1979. This was such a big deal that the Texas State Senate made her governor for a day on June 10, 1972 which meant that Jordan became the very first African-American woman to preside over a legislative body in the entire United States. In the U.S. Congress, Barbara Jordan made a name for herself fighting for civil rights and women's rights. She also gained fame for the tremendous public speaking skills that she had first developed at Texas Southern University. One of her most powerful speeches was delivered on July 25, 1974, as the U.S. Congress held hearings on TV about the impeachment of President Richard Nixon and his involvement in what became known as the Watergate scandal. In a 15-minute speech on national television, that catapulted Jordan into the annals of American history, she eloquently explained how even the president was not above the Constitution of the United States. Jordan stated, My faith in the Constitution is whole, it is complete, it is total. 
And I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, the destruction of the Constitution. It is reason and not passion which must guide our deliberations, guide our debate, and guide our decision. I yield back to Jordan's my powerful mind. voice and beautiful defense of American ideals captured people's hearts and catapulted Jordan to national prominence. She was soon invited to give the keynote address at the Democratic National Convention of 1976, a major milestone, as she was the first woman and the first African-American to do so. The following year, Jordan spoke at the historic National Women's Convention that met in Houston, Texas, building on her work to ensure the rights of women. After seven years in Congress, Jordan retired from politics in 1979 and took up a position as a distinguished professor at the Lyndon Johnson School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas at Austin, where she taught for the rest of her life. Some believe Jordan's decision to leave politics stemmed from personal life issues, including her declining health and sexual orientation, neither of which Jordan discussed publicly. In an essay printed on the website of the United States National Archives, Jordan is posthumously described as the first LGBTQ woman in Congress. Her companion, Nancy Earle, an educational psychologist helped care for Jordan when she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1976. During her lifetime, Jordan worked hard, both in public office and as a teacher for the common good. Believing public service to be the highest calling, she taught classes about the importance of ethics and moral principles in public service. Her colleagues and students spoke highly of her intellect and impact, and especially of her eloquent speech and commanding voice. As one student remembered, I've never met a person who believes so strongly that we can actually change the world. That gives me confidence that we really can. Over the course of her distinguished career, Jordan received 31 honorary doctoral degrees and many national awards. In 1994, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Bill Clinton. When she died on January 17, 1996, Barbara Jordan became the first African-American to be buried among governors, senators, and congressmen in the Texas State Cemetery. In fact, 27 years earlier, she wrote a bill to outlaw segregated cemeteries in Texas. So, thanks in part to her own effort, her grave rests on the top of the highest hill in the Texas State Cemetery in Austin, Texas. Let all understand that these guiding principles cannot be discarded for short-term political gains. They represent what this country is all about. They are indigenous to the American idea, and these are principles which are not negotiable. <laughs>